on there and hopefully I don't knock my phone over because I have it like Oh, it's on. Boom. What's up, Facebook? And then YouTube later. Um, so this is Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you go ahead and give a little bit about yourself? What's going on? Um, yeah, Jonathan. Uh, known Brad via the fitness world for a while now. Um, cool dude. I'm out here in Seattle, Washington. Six uh, four. Just hit my two thirty mark. Uh, just getting back into the game pretty hard. Getting ready for the Air World Cup next year in April. Yep. I um. So we met. Almost two years ago now at the um, NPC Washington Ironman Natural Competition. Um, so obviously you were you were in the tall boy class at six four, um, and I was in the I was in the five uh, eleven class. Um, so we both taken some time off to grow. But um, I guess what's your plans to compete next? I know you're competing soon. Um, yeah. So essentially, I want to get up to. 250 pounds by January, and then start prepping with uh, a couple people. I'm not getting a full coach, but just a couple people I grind it out with. Um, and then I hope, 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 cross my fingers to walk on stage for bench physique and class physique at no less than 220. So we'll see how that goes, see if that happens. Um, but uh, that's about it. Yeah, just grinding away, figuring out a couple tweaks in my diet to get me where I need to be. So, Another 20, 25 pounds can be tough to hit. Yeah, yeah, but you can do it. I know you can, so. Especially with those donuts you've been sending me pictures of, that's for hey, sure. Legendary donuts is where it's at. Yeah. So, speaking of donuts, so um, why don't you talk about how many meals you're eating? Um, now you said you're doing uh, six meals a day. Yep. Uh, so six meals a day. I'll keep it pretty brief. So, uh, my first meal, I just do two scoops of whey, one cup of oatmeal. I've been sleeping for five, six, seven, eight hours, so I want protein in my system fast. Um, I just do plain oatmeal. I'm not really too worried about sugars and carbs now, so I just put a little syrup on there. Um, Mrs. Buttersworth, she knows what's up. And then meal number two, three, four, and five are pretty much going to consist of eight ounces of either steak, chicken, ground turkey, and then this is right now, I'll be changing this next week, but I'm only going uh, five ounces of carbs, potatoes or rice before my workout, and then five ounces after my workout with, uh, sometimes before, I'll down like five or six Oreos, I'll down some of those donuts, um, I'll have a bowl of cookie crisp or fruit pebbles, something like that before my workout, and then meal number six is also, that's out about uh, 10.30 at night, um, and then that's just eight ounces of some sort of meat, and then uh, that's it, call it a day. Yeah. So real shout, real quick shout out to Wills. I uh, hope you're enjoying that submarine life. Uh, I see that you are enjoying the mountains in the Pac Northwest right now, which you know Jonathan's up there still in the Pac Northwest. The weather's been looking beautiful, so um, kind of jealous. Kind of jealous of that. That's the only time I miss Seattle. I'm not gonna lie, summertime because in Houston it's hot. But oh, man. I love the winter time though, so I'm stoked for the fall time. I run, I run hot anyways. So <laughs> Yeah, so um, for me, I know we talked about this before, but um, so you, you're following macros too, but it's kind of, we're both bulking, so we care more about um, hitting minimum. So we have like minimum protein, minimum carbs, um, and uh, minimum fats, and then if we go over that, it's it's cool. Um, yeah. And Nick, you are on live Facebook. Um, and Britton, any experience working with a diet for someone with hypo thyroidism. I don't have experience with that, but I think that um, macros in general, if you start out, you can kind of judge uh, your weight loss and weight gain off of that, and then you can tweak it. Um, I don't really know how that's going to affect your diet, but I do know that restricting carbs too much can affect your um, your metabolism if you uh, you know really lower those. So I think that you should probably just kind of start with the baseline diet. Um, and then you can you can adjust from there, um, and then you know if, you know if you're losing weight too fast, you can raise them up. If, if you're not losing fast enough, you can lower them. But any more than I'd say like a half a pound a week, 
um, is probably too quick and you should shoot for that half a pound a week goal. Yeah, sure. I agree there. Yeah. And Nick, I know you're living that bulk life. I see your photos. That's uh that's yeah. that's what I that's what I'm talking about. There's cheeseburgers, Mexican food, uh but oh diabetic and adjusting macros. Man, I really think that for that you really have to be careful on the glycemic index, which is something that I know some people have asked me about sugars. Um and uh, do we do like do you count sugars and fibers right now? Um, and I know I don't. And I think you were saying you don't either. No, I don't, I don't count any sugars. I don't count any, count any fibers. Right. Uh, I, of course, I'm not waxing off ten sneakers bars every day. If I do eat some Oreos, it's a handful of them. That's about it. Everything's in moderation. Be smart about it, and then you're you know you're golden. Right. Yeah. So so with with uh, with diabetic, I think that really you got to pay attention to more than like the sugars and stuff like that 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 we don't necessarily pay attention to because you you do want to not have those high glycemic index foods because you don't really want to mess with your insulin uh, levels as much. Um, I obviously don't have a lot of experience with that, and there are some people that do. I know Jason Poston. Uh, you know he's he's a type one di uh, diabetes. He has it, and uh, he does a lot of coaching. So. That's someone that I'd really tap into knowledge there if I was gonna go into that realm. Um, but do you got anything to add onto that, or? Uh, I think on stuff like that, disorders or you know, health wise, um, follow that doctor recommendation. Don't listen to some dude off the street who knows who thinks he knows what he's talking about. So follow the doctor's orders on that. Yeah. Oh, also, um, speaking of that, why don't we talk about the importance of a knowledgeable coach? Um, I know that, like, my first show I competed at, I'm not going to talk about who who coached me. Um, it's no one that most people know. I mean, um, but I was doing way too much cardio and on, on such a bad deficit that it literally, like, ruined working out for me for a while. Like, I didn't want to work out afterwards. I felt bad in the gym. I lost a lot of muscle mass, um, and I never wanted to compete again. It's it's just about recently where I've just entertained the idea of competing. I still haven't decided yet, but it's like just now where I've entertained the idea. So, um, why don't you talk about your um, experience? Yeah, so, uh, first off, anyone who's on my Facebook Live and not Brad, if you can't hear him, let me know, and I'll turn the volume up. Um, so, coaching wise. I won't mention my last coach either for the Ironman. Um, props to him though. He, I, I think he did a good job. There were some things that I didn't really believe in or follow. And then I kind of just did my own thing afterwards and saw a lot of good growth. Um, but in my opinion, a coach is only as good as his accountability. If your coach isn't there 24 7 during your contest prep, in my opinion, he's letting you down, especially if you're spending money. On some of these coaches, I know a lot of people spend stupid money on a coach, and I'm like, well, when's the last time I talked to him? Like, oh, two weeks ago. I'm like, what are you talking about two weeks ago? So your, your coach should be all about accountability, and then if you're going to stick with a coach, let it ride out. Stick with them. Don't change it up. Don't switch it up, because then then you're going to have too many people conflicting interests, too many philosophies. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, you got to realize what's going to work for you. Like my last contest prep, I was eating carbs for – all six of my medals, I was doing cardio for 40 minutes in the morning, cardio for 40 minutes at night, um, abs every day, and then I was eating carbs up until the day of the show. Hey, what's up, Ash? Um, I was doing carbs up until the day of the show, and I think I was, I think I got, you know, I, I don't want to say robbed on there, but I, uh, I think I came in pretty good. I looked, I looked good. I think I could have came in a little leaner. Um, but other than that, it was pretty good. So that's about the bottom line. If you're paying for a coach, don't spend a lot of money uh, unless he's there 24-7. And I mean, you can call him at midnight, he's going to answer the phone. Yeah. You can text him at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, he's going to respond to you right away. That's yeah. Rachel, I'm going to touch on that a second, but I just want to add on to, to what uh, John said. And that is, um, when you find a coach, and especially if you find them via social media, make sure you find other clients because they normally just highlight the ones they want you to see, right? There's plenty of people that they don't want you to see. So, um, and then talk to those people, find out how much cardio they're doing, what they're eating, you know, um, 
and, and find out stuff like that. But Rachel asked, any tips on how to deal with post-show depression? Like when you start gaining body fat back, it feels like a major backtrack, which is, I mean, that's huge. I mean, Aubrey and I have talked about this a lot. Um, that's such a good question. Um, I think every bodybuilder or competitor faces that body image issue. And I think that every single person would be lying to you, even up to like Phil Heath and all those guys, if they told you that they were comfortable, you know, five or six weeks after they stepped off stage and they were, you know, a lot higher body fat percentage. So I'm gonna tell you right now, how do you deal with it? Um, you need to stop comparing yourself to the fitness world and start, um, looking at like how you're progressing in the gym, like the weights you're lifting, like you're lifting heavier now. Um, you may be, yeah, you may be a little bit softer, but you're, you're healthier, you feel better. Um, and look at those old photos of you and be like, I'm going to be like this forever. Because if you want to be like that forever, if you want to be stage lean forever, then you need to say goodbye to PRs on everything. You need to say bye to gaining more muscle mass because it's a cycle that you have to kind of add a little bit of fat back to yourself to, to make those gains. Um, but you don't have to let loose. Um, but you know, you, you kind of got to accept if you want to make the progress, you kind of have to accept that extra body fat. So I don't know if you have anything to add to that one, but I know that's a struggle with the majority of people. So I'd say you're not alone too. So. Absolutely. And so uh, secondly, for people that are watching, we'll see this later. Um, I'll add the link later, Nick. Brad on his YouTube video, so you can go back and rewatch it, check it out, and follow Brad uh, and Aubrey. They've got a sweet channel. Um, but on that, like everything that you do has to be. I talked about this today uh, with the, like this uh, friend of mine, and um, everything you do has to be long term goals. Like, like for example, I decided to do the Emerald Cup again next year. That was that was. 12, it's 12 months in the making. It's not like, oh, I'm going to do this in two months. I'm planning for a year in advance. When you get off stage and you lose that weight or you gain that weight back and you lose the abs and the striations, guys or girls who compete, you kind of just got to check your ego and figure out what kind of lifestyle you want to live. I know a couple people who get off stage and they're like, I'm done. I did one show. See you later. Some people do five, six, seven shows in a year um, and they're just hungry to get a pro card or to just be the best they can be to get first place. So just, man, you can be a bodybuilder or whatever you want to say. Uh, life's short, though. you got to have fun. you got to have goals. you got to have uh, things you want to live more life. If you gain 10, 20 pounds you know, of fat, like me right now, I feel like I'm a chubbers. You know? I feel like, man, I'm, I'm, losing, I'm losing any sort of leanness I have, but that's part of the game. So just set your, set your mind up. Don't worry about anyone else. Um, focus and just do you. Yep. Uh, yeah, and like I said, just keep in perspective. Um, you know, a lot of people compare themselves to those people that are competing at the gym, you know, that, that are right next to them. And the truth is, um, you know, you are in better shape than 99% of people out there. So quit worrying so much about that. Um, quit putting so much worth, I guess, on your outward appearance and, and put more worth on your physical health and uh, your mental health and the numbers that you're able to put up in the gym. Um, I don't think there's anyone that like PRs their squats, um, no. you know, the the day before they get on stage for a show, and so. Yeah, um, and, and like, so this this always this always comes up. So, uh, I was training. I was just in the gym on Sunday. This random dude walks up. It's like he's like, oh, hey, I want to make a bet. I'm gonna bet you. I can I'll bet you in doing this. I'm like, all right, well that's stupid. I don't do bench press on Sundays anyways. But the whole the, the ego of what you live in the gym, how much can you put? But uh, that's just an ego thing. It's only impresses me a couple people in the gym, but who cares? It's like, you know, I don't care what I'm in, just what I look like. So you've got to leave your ego at the door, you know, when you're contest prepping or you're gaining weight and your strength isn't there. You just got to just check in. Don't worry about it. Just, just grind away and hit your goal, whatever if your goal is not for a year or two away. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's like just remember why you're doing it and – um you know, you gotta, you gotta accept that, that progress. Um, so, but, uh, so do you have any questions on your end? I know I got a couple people joined. Welcome. And, um, Hey babe, <laughs> Aubrey just joined from LA. So she's gone. So <laughs> jealous. She gets to enjoy the fun in the sun over there in LA. 
Um, and it probably yeah. won't be as muggy and nasty as it is in Houston, so. I could live in Texas, bro. <laughs> it's, it's warm here, I'm not gonna lie. I said it's like, it's like, it's like being in Panama City again, except the beach is yeah. not as nice. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But, um, really that's, you know, we talked about some things we wanted to talk about. If anyone, no one else has any questions, that's, that's about it. Um. Yeah, but, I'm high here. Uh, we're at like six o'clock, so most of the people on my end are might be up later or ask questions. But I would say the majority of them are in the gym right now. Uh, so good job, to you guys, crushing it. I was in there earlier. Yeah. Uh, so well, we'll definitely do this again if people have more questions for Jonathan and I. Um, you know, if you want anything answered on our perspective. Um, you know, Jonathan took a, a year off, so he can talk to you about how getting back into the gym and, and maybe, you know, some tips and tricks to, to getting back in there if y'all wanted to hear about that. But um, I'll link his social media um, to this, and uh, he's already linked on Facebook, so add him as a friend, follow him, watch his journey to the Emerald Cup stage. Um, and then for his friends that are checking us out on YouTube or are watching this later on, I appreciate all the support. and. Let's go get it. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll link up uh, Brad Aubrey's YouTube page and the same for Brad. Um, super humble dude. Uh, he's always sending me pictures of himself looking better than me, so I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to keep myself out there getting it. So <laughs> that's actually good, bro. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, Facebook. We'll see you later.